Uh, you're welcome back. And the conversation is about uh, the obvious drama and uh, the conversation that is the in the world of sport, at least on the continent. And it's about a super who's who ordinarily, you know, after they've um, won against the Mediterranean night of Libya on Friday, supposed to travel for the return leg and then all, you know, hell in a kind of way broke loose in the travel arrangement and the way the Eagles uh, were abandoned at the airport and the pictures have leaked the social media space, the conditions. In fact, we learned they were supposed to, you know, touch down at Benghazi International Airport, but, you know, almost uh, midway into the air, they were told their flight was diverted to another uh, airport that is not international in nature. They were abandoned there. 17 hours of travel. As you know, if you can have the picture, you see uh, the condition of these guys and what really happened. Many of them who are superstars in their own right sleep in this kind of conditions. And these are the issues as well. Abandoned, not being taken care of. We learned um, from the NFF, the General Secretary, the President, when they even made efforts, maybe, to have something, got out of the airport to have something, you know, purchased, to be eaten, no food, no water for the boys. They were, you know, restricted as well. And these are some of the issues. You could see a vehicle and in which one of the Super Eagles guys, Boniface, uh, you know, Victor Boniface said, that particular vehicle you are seeing was, was, was you know, <laughs> prepared. Or the super egos of Nigeria, that is somebody going on a Monday market, uh, you know, kind of arrangement. But then, uh, so that we buy our time, we have a national football uh, journalist with us and chief uh, football writer for ACS Sport, Fisayo Dairo. You know, he joins us virtually from Port Harcourt. Good morning, Fisayo. Uh, good morning, Femi. Good morning, Evelyn. It's so nice to join you guys on the show this morning. Yes, nice good to have you again. Let me ask you, you're a friend of these boys, the friend of the house, and you followed them, followed the international matches. And what really happened? Because so many stories uh, have lit at the international, uh, you know, space. Let me put it like that. And there have been accusations and counter accusations as well. What happened, Isaiah? Okay. Um, Nigeria Super Eagles went to Libya just like you reeled out earlier on, to face the Libyans in the reverse fixture of the game played in New York on Friday, 2025 AFCON qualifier. And as it is the norm with the Super Eagles, they do travel on the charter arrangement. So they have this um, value jet arrangement. And so they got due clearance because it's North Africa. Of course, I've experienced this myself. They had to fly from Kano. You know, when I went to the AFCON in 2019 in Egypt, my return was routed to Kano. They said there was no seats to Abuja, you know, on Egypt here. So they had to leave Ujo. They got a clearance first in Ujo. They had to go to fly to Kano. And then from Kano, they got due clearance to land in Benghazi, Benina, which is where the game was going to take place. So the chatter, it was just a four hour flight, three hours, 50 something minutes or thereabouts. So, and on getting to Benghazi, Benina, that's few minutes to descend, not even midway, few minutes to start their descent to the Benina International Airport. They got, the pilot got a message from the router right there in the airport that they, they, are, they are unable to land. They have to go to the Alabrak International Airport. It was strange to the pilots because um, clearances were obtained at two different international airports in Nigeria, you know, and something like that had never happened before. You know, according to the pilots, they were diverted to the eastern part, which should never be their route. That it is not even their alternate, uh, the alternate airports, you know, in in in, in aviation arrangements. There's always an alternate airport to land in case of emergency or whatever. This was not even the alternate airport, you know. So after the, the pilot said about eight times, they, they argued and argued, argued on it. Everything was on recording anyway. So they had to go back. They had to fly to the airport, which we heard is only used basically for hard purposes. So that was a long and short of story. And then they landed because, you know, this is a national team. This is Nigeria's national to the flagship to, like you mentioned, 
the boys on the plane are millionaires, billionaires in Iran. So the Nigerian embassy in Libya had to be on top of their job. I've traveled with a Nigerian club on the continent, for instance, to Liberia, and I know how much of embrace and you know acceptance that the Liberian embassy, the Nigerian embassy in Liberia gave to us. Now imagine the separate goals of Nigeria. Mm. So the Nigerian consulate was there in Benghazi waiting for the guys until that last minute ship diverted them to Alabrak, where it was even dangerous to move late in the night and also so i think that's basically to cut the long story short because it's all in the open but that's uh, the key points that's needed to be noted you know um how the libyans uh, diverted right there they diverted the team to alabrak and left them for over 15 hours 17 hours so to say it's quite uh you know one can imagine because you can only feel it you know through uh, the social media space one can imagine the position of the boys as we have them on the screen right now, uh, you know, many of them try to be in high spirit. Maybe some of them played cards, you know. Uh, but the one thing that we learned is they conducted themselves in good manners. By the way, some persons will say they have no choice because the hostility was staring them at the face. So they couldn't have raised rabbles. You could see many of them sleeping in funny conditions. You know, please shed more light. There is this counter accusation on the social media space we learned from the Libyan captain or some of them that this was the same treatment they got when they came to Uyo. Is that true? In, you know, uh, the North Africans are smart and wicked, let me put it that way, because it's not just smartness, it's wickedness. You know, we that we follow Nigerian club football very well, mm -hmm. we are used to these things. Yeah. Anytime a North African team is coming to play against a Nigerian team, especially when they are playing against a team that is good, a team that they believe is superior, is more superior than them. And this always comes from Libyans. You know, in North Africa, Libyans are the weakest football playing team. Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt are strong football playing nations, you know, not, not for Libya. So whenever Libyan club especially come to Nigeria, this is what they do the most. They try to whip up sentiments, lies, and all when they travel first, so that when they come back, when you come to their country, they will try to frustrate you. That's what they always do. You know, it happened two years ago when Rivers United, where I'm based, yeah. played against Ali Benghazi. There is an international port, airport in Port Harcourt, but they will refuse to, to land in your city. You know, it, it also happens in some other North African clubs. I remember even when they faced Pyramids FC, a big, um, um, a big club in Egypt, three years ago, 2021, in the quarterfinal of the CAF Confederation Cup. The, you know, there is always conversation. There is always correspondences exchanged between the two footballing federations, copied, uh, and where they will copy CAF. Mm. So... The Nigerian team will always ask because they know that if you don't treat them well in the first first leg, you know, if you even treat them well in the first leg, you expect hostility in the second leg. How much more not treating them well? So let me I'm just using that, that reference from the Imba game. Mm. The Imba sent lots of mails. They were playing out of seek, and then okay, Imba felt okay. You are coming, it's either you land in Lagos or in Abuja, because that's where their opponents have always landed first. So Aimba prepared a team in Abuja and another team in Lagos to welcome the Egyptians once they land. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They landed in Port Harcourt through a charter flight. So this was the kind of script that played out with the Libyans. Every Nigerian opponent have always landed in New York. It's an international airport. If the worst case scenario will be you may land first in Abuja or in Lagos, and then you'll be transmitted absolutely to Uyo. So, and that was the, the communication with the Libyan authorities is that perhaps they, they also, have, because of how wicked or how bad they are, they like to keep their opponents in the dark. Their own team, who should make your preparations, they, mm. they like to keep them in the dark. So, after the NFM had asked and asked, where are you going to land? The FA secretary just said, don't worry, we will let you know. Because it was a Friday game, 
ordinarily they should be landing on Wednesday or even Thursday morning. But they chose to come in on Tuesday and left the NFF in the dark. And when the NFF said, oh, you landed in Port Harcourt, they told them, okay, now that you guys have landed in Port Harcourt, fine, complete the custom processes and you'll be flown to Uyo, which naturally there are no flights from Uyo to Port Harcourt because it's too close. It's like a 15 minutes trip on, on, on the air, you know. So, and they said, oh, they don't have aviation fuel and stuff, so they would rather come by road. And the NFF gave them everything. This particular one, a lot of people may not believe, but I know it has happened to our clubs. They provide them with buses and they will reject it. They will say, don't worry, we have made our own arrangements. And then they will use it against you in cases like this. So, long and short of the story is that you can only be safe if you play your first leg in North Africa. Mm. Because so, you uh, know that the return is, is in Nigeria and there will be nobody to win. I, I saw a, a compilation that they did on social media about how they were treated in Nigeria. But I can assure you, majority of the clips put, put inside that compilation were not in Nigeria. They, mm. they have used the Port Harcourt Airport at least 15 times. None of those those pictures were in the Port Harcourt Airport. None of those videos. So All right, that's Fisaya. how they behave, basically. Mm. Yeah. Now, there are people, in fact, personally, I want to ask the question, to what end is this game being played by the Libyans? Uh, to what end? Do, do, what, are, what is the end game? Is it to frustrate? Is it, is it to frustrate the Super Eagles so they don't play a good game um, on match day, or was it some form of reciprocity? What is the end game for them? Thank you very much for this question. The, the end game is what has always been to frustrate the Super Eagles and to distract the players from playing well. You know, look at what happened in New York on Friday. They, they knew that we were on our own territory. And they, 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 they can only do what they did, which was from the first minute, they were wasting time. Mm. That's, what, that's what they do best. The goalkeeper wasted a lot of time. And then Nigeria got the goal in the 80th minute. They wanted to be compensated with the time they wasted on their own position. And the referee had just four minutes. That you wasted the time, you won't profit from that. And at full time, they accosted him. That's, that's their game. So, in the return leg, it wouldn't have ended there. Like I was telling some people yesterday, they, they, they didn't know that Nigeria's Super Eagles is, is not an average Nigerian club. If it were to be a Nigerian club, mm. the game today will go ahead. It will. Mm. If you like, sleep 20 hours. Anyba slept 24 hours at the airport. The game went ahead. So, at the end of the day, Anyba could not win the game. So, that's the game. They do not want you to be at your best. Imagine these players that billionaires that perhaps I, I, I've never slept. Look at these boys born, born in Europe, for instance. They've never slept like that all, uh, their whole life. And how do you want them to, 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 to be at their best if the game had gone ahead? Is this the, so is this the first yeah. time something like this is happening with an, a national team? Have you seen this before? Aside, you know, the club situation you pointed out, have you seen anything like this with national teams? Yeah, you know, the, the main reason why I don't think it has really happened. I think to an extent in North Africa, it happens. But, you know, this thing, this case today is unprecedented. Or the case of it, it was unprecedented. Why? Because it, it was in cahoots with the Libyan government. Mm. They brought the aviation people in play. Yeah. So... The, the flight was rooted. They knew that was the only way they could get at the separate groups. All right. Because that's why, obviously, it has not happened before. Because if Nigeria had landed in Benghazi, Benina, all their plans that, okay, we, we, we will leave them at the airport, we will not attend to them, we will not give them escort, everything had been taken care of by the Nigerian embassy. Mm. So the only way they could circumvent the embassy and all the preparations that Nigeria have made ahead was to take them to an inaccessible airport. And that's why it's obvious that things like this don't happen because 
national team federations have to work with the governments of their countries uh, of their country to ensure that these games this is the flagship competition of african football of car so that's why you won't hear these things happening often between countries all right um Fisaya, we have to run but then um what do you think would be uh, the disciplinary measures or punitive measures that you know this matter have been reported to um, CAF to investigate our boys are back home. What do you think will stem from this as per disciplinary measures? Because according to what uh, the captain of the team said, uh, William Trust Ekhung, he said that uh, even the pilot of uh, the 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 plane, you know, was not Nigerian, and when they landed, he went to you know look for a hotel. He wa he got, but his crew members because they were Nigerians, were not allowed into the hotel. So he had to go back and sleep in the plane. So the, the, there are receipts all over social media, and I'm sure the government will also, you know, forward those receipts to CAF. But then, as a, a, a sports journalist, you've been in this game for a while now. What do you think will stem out of this when uh, as per punitive measures? You know, uh, as much as I'm confident that Nigeria will get a good airing, I must admit that it's a very tricky case because it's not just a footballing case anymore. You know, the Libyan FA will tell CAF that, man, there is one thing about them, they, the North African generally, they know how to cover their tracks with CAF. Part of also because CAF have been too North Africa oriented. In most cases involving Southern or Western African countries or clubs against Northern African clubs, they always side with the North Africans. That's why cases like this have been allowed to linger for, for so many years. So, but to cut the story short, I think the most likely outcome will be CAF will reschedule the game at a later date. They might punish both teams. In November, there will be two matches to round up the qualifying series, mm. but they might give us three games and say, you guys have to play on Wednesday, Saturday and Tuesday, instead of Nigeria playing only on Friday and Tuesday. That's in November 15 and thereabout. So um, that, that, that's likely outcome. The Libyans will contest it a lot because they know how to cover their tracks. But I know CAF know that they cannot walk Nigeria over. They cannot throw Nigeria away because, like you have also seen, it's a case that has been well broadcast across the world. Right. Right. And they know that eyes are on them. But the Libyans will do everything. The most, the stiffest punitive measure, which, which I would have loved to be given to the Libyans, would have been to have the game replayed outside of Libya. Mm. But I, I don't know how CAF will do it because um, the day we also like to avoid litigation. It's, they can easily take them to the Court of Arbitration for sport All expenses. Right. And of course, they will throw the competition yeah, into the Shapirut and so mm. on. So I think the convenient. Mm decision by CAF would be to reschedule the game for a later date. All right, two questions. Uh, as we run down, um, you know, talking, taking it from where the evening started, the release from CAF says, CAF views the disturbing and unacceptable experiences of the Nigerian national football team, Superidus, at an airport in Libya in a very serious light. And um, the content says CAF has been in contact with the Libyan and the Nigerian authorities, after it had been informed that the Super Aragus and the technical team were stranded in disturbing conditions for several hours at an airport that they were allegedly as instructed to land by the Libyan authorities. The matter has been referred to the CAF disciplinary body for investigation and appropriate action will be taken against those who violated the CAF statutes and regulations. Personally speaking, and for many sport enthusiasts, besides, they expect a stronger use of words really they feel this is just a normal thing with all you are saying there should be the the stem issues show some strong use of words and they you know frowning at what is up not just to say we view it in a very serious light and you know corroborating what you said we are not you know too surprised by this because with the ismaili when Ayimba was you know reigning in africa you remember Ismaili experienced the Tunisia, wasting of time, tactics, and all of those things. This is one of the things they do. But Libya brought it to an all-time low. Now, with all of this, 
are you saying there's not going to be any fine any point deduction and the best nigeria could get maybe is just a rescheduled match well to start with point deduction unfortunately the libyans have one point from three matches so which point you want to deduct mm. <laughs> you know but um there should be fines but you know in that statement the statement i like two parts of the statement mm. the first part which he said calf views it in a disturbing you know light in a know, serious light. which means which means advantage nigeria mm. calf already acknowledged that it's disturbing yeah right then in the end they said they, they, they said they will look at those that contravene the regulations mm. so the libyans will try to play on that of course they will say the game was still over 24 hours away mm. they had no right to boycott it's in the regulations but it's, it's also in the CAF regulations that every host country must make everything available in terms of logistics all right to to ease their opponents mm. in coming into the country settling down and playing the game so all libya right. also fell foul of that so right. um there will be fines but mm. you know fines in africa they are nothing fines, all right, um... even yeah. Like, even Nigerian people advocate that we don't need fines again. Mm. Bring in something. Last, I, I understand when you said deduction of points, but mm. it, it should just lead to unnecessary litigation. All right. I, we don't I will need take deduction this... of points. They are the ones with no points. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll take it as your parting that... shot. I, I want to also, yeah. sorry, speak to the yeah. mentality of the boys, especially the captain. You know, many persons have been applauding that possibly um he really led the team well he was communicating on the social media handle and the use of what are been what is expected of a leader and i really led the team well even when we learned that was inter network um, internet service at some point and some of those things i want you to speak to the morality i mean sorry the morale of the boys and how they handled it and what will be going forward would this be an abatros on the team well, you know, I, I think the players had no problems. You know why? The mm. Super Eagles, it's it, it, it playing for the Super Eagles of Nigeria is, mm. is bliss. That's why a lot of these players, they don't know what they are enjoying. If this had happened to the home base Super Eagles, I'm not even talking about the club now. Mm. When the home base Super Eagles played against Ghana in the qualifiers for Chan two years ago, no single NFF member followed the team to Ghana. No single NFF member. You know, it was the, the, the coaches complained to me when they came back. Mm. So you can imagine, if not that we and Ghana, we are brothers, forget all our rivalry on social media. Mm. We love ourselves. You know, I, I, I was still in Ghana this year. So they, they will never do something like that to us, and we will never do something like that to them as well. So mm. imagine something of sort that happened to the team in Ghana. But the Super Eagles in Benghazi, they had no problems. They were in, they, they were accompanying of the NFL president, the sports minister, um, uh, Philip Shaibu, the head deputy governor. So these people are powerful people in football, wow. and they will always sort, my, sort things. They knew that what happened was beyond anyone's control. So, mm -hmm. but it was important that Cruz Ekong made those comments on Twitter yeah. even before his videos mm -hmm. because it carried more weight. Yeah. You know, look at the British media, for instance. He is a player that had played. In England, mm. he played for Watford. He, he grew up in the Tottenham Academy, so they could easily report from that angle. I, mm. I saw the Sky Sports report, and they said former Watford defender through second. So, mm. having the right. captain speak out mm. carried much more water than just a, maybe the FA president or anything. So, I don't think going forward it will affect them or All be right. anything. They know a lot of them have over fifty caps for Nigeria, mm. but right. they've never experienced that before. Mm. So, it's just good that they they see what they are. They are less privileged colleagues in Nigeria have been facing yeah. for years now. All right. Uh, Nigeria football journalist and, of course, chief football writer for ACS Sport, Isaiah Darrell. Thank you. And by the way, one of these days you meet the boys, tell them we are rooting for them from here. No problem. So we deliver the message. All right. Thank you very much for your time and take. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, that would be it. You know, as they say, uh, life no balance. Yeah. And I think the Super Eagles got a fair share of that expression. And uh, we must go. Yes, we must go. You can watch a recap of the show on our YouTube channel at Western Spring TV.
connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Axe on Western Spring Television. My name is Evelyn Ohiola. Stay tuned for Spring Trends coming right after this broadcast. And I'm Femi Ojo. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing.